Dr. Sos, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, I mean, you worked on the front lines, you were there, you witnessed it with your own eyes, you saw firsthand um, the effects of lockdowns, the sort of unintended consequences of government policies, and in many ways how the prescription, the, the supposed cure, uh, was worse than the disease in terms of lockdowns being worse than the pandemic itself. So I was hoping you could uh, walk our audience through a little bit of, of, of what that looked like, um, some of the worst things that you saw as a doctor working in the ICUs, and some of the things that maybe Canadians aren't even really aware of well, what was going on during COVID. Uh, okay. Well, so I saw some horrible things. I, I spoke uh, last time I was on your show about uh, in a single week admitting multiple elders from nursing homes who were starving to death because their families were banned from the premises in the name of social distancing. And so there was no one to feed them. Um, and they almost died of starvation in Canada in 20, uh, 2020, 2021. Um, uh, some things I, I didn't get to speak about <clears throat> were the obvious worsening of uh, addictions problems. I saw some folks who quite literally drank themselves to death. And um, uh, unlike starvation, uh, that's not necessarily something we can fix when you get in. So I, I did see some younger folks, uh, mid thirties, mid forties, who died of alcohol. Um, and, you know, in taking the stories from them, it was very clear they lost their job. They'd been shut in for three months. People aren't supposed to live that way. Um, and they turned to drink and uh, never, never recovered. Um, I um, had read uh, about catatonic depression as a medical student. That means uh, depression so severe that you're in a coma. I don't generally um, look after folks uh, for depression because I'm not a psychiatrist. But if you are in a coma from your depression, you do often come under the care of a medical doctor. Um, and like I said, I'd never seen a case. I saw two in 2020. Um, one man after six months uh, of not leaving his house, a who his wife said was a perfectly lovely gentleman, 35 years of marriage. Uh, he tried to strangle her and he collapsed and fell into a coma. Um, I saw a woman who tried to kill her grandchildren after being uh, locked in with them for three months. And when she sort of came to out of whatever that state she was in, uh, she said, that wasn't me. She couldn't, she couldn't believe that she'd done it. Um, we, you know, working in Kingston, I, um, where all the federal prisons are, I, I have looked after serial killers and I, I've learned a little bit about the prison system in Canada. And Paul Bernardo gets um, an hour of sunlight a day. Um, so so uh, if you're a serial killer and you're in our federal prison system and you behave badly, you get put in isolation. Isolation is considered a punishment for the very worst of the worst. Um, and we, we did that to all Canadians. Um, and so the, the ravages thereof were just visible all over the system. Um, I hate to talk about this, but I had a colleague, a, a friend, a wonderful ICU nurse who died by suicide um, last summer and her obituary um, pointed out the, that the effects of lockdowns have been very difficult on her mental health. Um, so I, I saw, and then in terms of the public commentary, it was all everyone stay home um, for the sake of our healthcare workers. But all of this was very hard on healthcare workers. I would say that every time I went to the hospital, there was a new rule um, about you know masking and checking in, and you can't you can no, no longer have potlucks it, at a hospital I'm familiar with. The nurses received an email from the management um, on Christmas Eve saying the management was going to walk around and make sure nobody was having a potluck on Christmas Eve, and if you were, you'd be fired on the spot. Um, so there were just all sorts of inhumane things. I saw. Um, a patients of mine who uh, the healthcare team had to fight for them to get to see their loved ones before they died. I had patients who were between life and death in the ICU for three months, um, whose families were not allowed to visit them for the duration. I was at a time when um, uh, patients from Scarborough were being transferred elsewhere and, and Scarborough was considered a red zone. Um, and so their families were not allowed to come visit. And um, one, of the, uh, one of the worst things I saw was um, a, young indigenous man with a disability and a severe medical problem uh, flew down from a reserve um, and his, his mom came as his translator and she was kicked out of the hospital. So she, she'd flown in and when she arrived, she was told there's no hospital visitors and she was kicked out at four in the morning in a strange city where she didn't know anyone. Um, and I, I'm sorry to say, I don't know what became of her, but so I guess I would say I saw all sorts of miserable things um, uh, that I, I call Russian novel levels of despair. 
Um, and none of these things make it to the CP24 news crawler. Um, they, were, they were breathlessly reporting cases of COVID and deaths from COVID, and, and those things are important. Um, my background, I, I came to medicine with a degree in English literature. My background's in the humanities, and, and I, I, I think that some things can only be expressed humanistically. And maybe some of those folks uh, in those terrible situations will write novels about what they went through. Um, but it, I think it'll be many years before we fully grasp what, what was perpetrated on our population these last two years.